Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and if you thought my gumbo episode was a little controversial, wait until you see this one. Guys, we are making a dish today in the Instant Pot that typically takes hours to do, and it's a whole process, and it's no surprise, it's an incredible, incredible Vietnamese dish, and it's called pho. Not pho, it looks like the word pho, believe me, I used to call it that all the time, but I've been corrected, and it is now pho. Kind of like that CeeLo song, Fuck you! Ooh, ooh, ooh. This soup is a soup that's made by masters. Chefs who make an amazing pho have my highest respect. Um, in fact, anybody who attempts to make one has my highest respect. But in this situation, guys, we're gonna do it in the Instant Pot, and it's totally gonna be a recipe that if you are really authentic and a stickler for pho, you're gonna just not wanna watch this anymore, because this is a recipe that it's gonna give you a result that tastes like an incredibly deep, rich pho, but doing it in a far, far less conventional way in the Instant Pot, and it's super quick to the point of it actually being a joke, and and you're gonna have a pho that will, in my opinion, rival any other pho you've ever had in terms of the broth and the richness and the flavor and just incredible. So guys, I can't wait to see how YouTube translates this video with the automated Google captions by me saying pho so much. So let's go to the Instant Pot and make some amazing pho. Now the first thing you have to do before you begin anything else is to cook the noodles. It's these pho noodles. You see it? It looks like pho, but it's pho, believe it or not. Ban pho. And you'll find these in your supermarket under rice sticks or even pad thai noodles. Now, these types of noodles have many different sizes. There's small, medium, M for medium, large, extra large. You want to go with either medium or small size noodle. So the larger the size, the wider the noodle. Medium is more comparable to a fettuccine, a small is more comparable to a linguine, but anything larger than that, you're going to get like a pappardelle or something like that. Do you hear how I just did that with my voice? That's like my mother when she tries to say mozzarella. She says mozzarella. I'm like, who are you kidding? You're a Jew from Brooklyn. So you don't actually ever boil these noodles in water like we do typical like egg-based pastas. We don't do that. What we do with this is we actually just take the boiling water and pour it over this. So you can boil water separately and then we can serve it individually. So bring some water to a boil and then get a pot deep enough like a soup pot like this, a nice decent sized one, and we're gonna put our pho noodles inside the pot. And because it's just the two of us, and this is a 16 ounce pack, I'm just gonna add about half of that in there. So like about eight ounces of noodles worth. And again, this is exactly why I'm not adding it to the soup right away, because I don't want them to cook in there. If I added the entire bag in there, it would just sit in there and they knew it would sop up if there were any leftovers. We don't want that to happen. And then take that boiling water and pour it over the noodles. Or you can just drop the noodles in the pot we just boiled the water in, just turn the heat off and make sure the pot's no longer boiling. And after a few moments of the noodles being in there, just start to give them a little bit of a stir around like that, and you're gonna see, it's already gonna to start to move around. These are very, very delicate noodles, guys. That's why we have to cook them like this and we don't boil them in water because they'll become mush. We just simply take the boiling water and bring it to the noodles. And you see that cloudiness coming off the noodles into the water? That's a good thing. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna let our noodles just sit in the water the entire time we are making the pho. Just let them sit there, that's what's gonna cook them. The water's eventually gonna get cool. But again, leave them fully submerged in that water the entire time. So now that we have our noodles taken care of, let's start with the medium yellow onion and let's slice it up nice and thinly now do you see how thin I have this slice that's exactly how I want it to be and we can just you know separate it if we want to as well but definitely make it nice and thinly sliced just like this okay now I'm using some chicken tenderloins or you could use some chicken thighs if you want to but these are boneless and skinless tenderloins that I'm using for this again not traditional for a really a pho because you usually put the whole chicken with all the skin on there in there but like I said, this is my version, it's a quicker version, and I'm telling you, it's gonna taste wonderful. But again, we're just gonna be using about a pound and a half or pound and a quarter or so of some of these great chicken tenders or thighs. And then I'm gonna cut it up into pieces about this size, just like that, all right? And to those who like more precise instructions other than just finger snaps, since not everybody can seem to do that, um, I'm going to give you a little quick little demo how I'm cutting the chicken. I'm taking each tenderloin, I'm taking a good knife, I'm slicing it right down the center just like so. And there we go, my chicken tenderloin is now halved. And I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to slice each half up again down the center like this. See that? And then just cut it again. So there we go. Those are the size pieces that I want just like this. Got that? All right, guys, so now because we're making this pho super unconventionally and super quickly, much more quickly than the traditional methods, we need to not sacrifice our spices. These are super key, and they're totally necessary to having a proper, deliciously tasting pho. 
Now these three things are cinnamon sticks, which are easily found anywhere, whole cloves, which are also easily found anywhere, and then some anise star or star anise or furalise or niece and nephew, whatever you want to call it. Again, it's anise star or star anise. They're little star looking things and they smell like black licorice, but don't let that fool you or freak you out. I hate black licorice myself, but they're going to make everything taste amazing. This is different from anise seed. If you can't find this in your supermarket, because some places might be a little more tricky to find this, you can totally order it online and I'll link in the recipe. But make sure we use all three of these spices. There are no substitutes here. Some cinnamon sticks, some whole cloves, and some star anise. So now let's go to our instant pot and we're going to add our spices in there and then give them a little bit of heat and toast them up in there, okay? So we're going to begin with our cinnamon sticks. I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to break them in half and then I'm just going to add them inside of the instant pot. Now I want to take some whole cloves. I'm going to use five of them and I'm going to throw those into the instant pot. And then I'm going to take three anise star. Or star anise or chenise, I like your smile, whatever. These things look like burnt charred little starfish. Um, and again, this is different from having anise seed. You want the full star anise, by the way. So try to get that and I'll link it in the recipe. Throw that in there too. So I'm going to come down to my control panel here and hit the saute button and I'm going to adjust so we're on the more or the high setting. Now let's let that pot get nice and heated up. And we want to toast this up for five minutes. So halfway through the five minutes, let's just stir everything around in there, flip everything over, make sure everything gets, you know, nice and toasted on all sides. And then we'll come back here in a moment and we'll remove it from the pot. All right, and after five minutes of this toasting this in the pot, let's just remove it and now we're going to crush it in a bowl. Just take it all of it out of there, make sure all the little remnants are out of the pot, all the cloves, all the star anise, all the cinnamon sticks. So now if you have a mortar and pestle type situation here, that's gonna come in really handy. If you don't, you can just totally do it in another method. You know, you could you put it in a bag with some napkins over it or some paper towels and use a mallet and bang it up. But I have a mortar and pestle, so I'm going to use it. And just crush everything up in here. It doesn't have to be completely pulverized, but small enough. So we should look like this when we're done. Nice and coarsely crushed up, just like that. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to transfer all of our crushed spices here into a metal tea ball or a little spice bag to put inside of your Instant Pot. What I want to do now, this is really going to come in very handy. This is also super, super cheap online. Just a few bucks and I'll link to it in the recipe. And you're just going to open these up now and I'm just going to take everything that we put in here, all the um, large substantial pieces, and put it inside of the little tea ball or again a spice bag if you have one of those. Or you can see my little tea bag method hack if you don't have these things and don't feel like buying one. So just put it in there. Okay, and there we go, perfect. Now I'm just gonna take my little metal T-bowl here and I'm just gonna securely close it up by doing the latch just like that. And there we go guys, all of our spice right in this little metal tea ball. It's gonna be so easy to just remove from the pot when it's done, no worrying about fishing anything out that might've came out of there. But this is also a super key and critical element to making this pho taste like a, well, a pho. Now I'm gonna come back to my Instant Pot and it should already be heated still from when we cook the spices in there and we toasted them up. I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of an extra virgin olive oil and let that heat up in the pot for about a minute. And after we've had a couple of minutes for our oil to heat up, now we're gonna take our onions and we're gonna add those into the pot. And then just stir them around, get everything nice and coated with the oil. And then we're just gonna let it sit here until it gets a nicely, slightly, you know, browned and a little bit maybe even charred. So this will take a couple of minutes. Just tend to it and watch it. Just give it a little bit of a stir. Because our onions are so thinly sliced, they're going to cook very quickly. Again, this is a super unconventional way to make this dish, but again, my spin on it, and it's going to be done in the Instant Pot, and we're going to have some really, really tasty results here, I promise. And once our onions are starting to look like this in terms of color, like the brownness you see that's going on down here, we are done. Let's remove them from the pot with some tongs and set them aside. Great, all right, now let's focus on our chicken. You see the bottom of the pot's a little bit brown now from the oil and that's totally fine. Let's just add our chicken now to the mix and dump it in there. And use a spatula and then just mix it around in the pot. And while the chicken is cooking in the pot, I'm gonna take some toasted sesame oil or regular sesame oil. I'm gonna add over the chicken a tablespoon of sesame oil. We're only gonna do this for about two minutes. And stir that all up in there. And then just deglaze and scrape the bottom of the pan. Make sure that all the chicken has a white color. Some pink showing is still okay, by the way. Now let's add in a tablespoon of crushed garlic, as well as a tablespoon of some crushed ginger. I'm using the Spice World Squeeze Ginger. You can get it at Costco. I love this stuff. So easy. I'm gonna dump that in there too. 
and give it all a good stir together in the pot. The garlic and the ginger with the chicken. And after about another minute of stirring with the garlic and the uh, ginger in there, our chicken is starting to look absolutely perfect. It's white throughout, and that means we're going to now add our broth. I'm going to add in three cups of chicken broth, and three cups of beef broth. And then stir all of that together and make sure you deglaze the bottom of the pot. Again, that means you just use like a wooden mixing spoon or whatever mixing spoon you're using and just scrape the bottom of the pot with the liquid in there now. Now we're going to add in two tablespoons of fish sauce. Now this stuff smells really pungent. By the way, you can find this at most supermarkets. It's really very simple to find um, in the Asian section or wherever they sell that kind of stuff. But um, it's really going to smell very pungent, but trust me, it's necessary for this. And don't be grossed out by the name. Again, totally necessary and totally amazing. So two tablespoons of that as well as two tablespoons of a hoisin sauce. This is like a plum sauce, the kind of stuff you'd typically get with mushu pork. Uh, if you can't find this in your supermarket, not all have it, an Asian market will certainly have it, or you can absolutely buy it online, and I'll link in the recipe. There we go. Now the last thing we want to do is just drop that metal tea bowl in there, and then stir all of that together. Now secure our lid, make sure that we're in sealing position. So now let's come back down to the control panel and hit keep warm cancel, and then I'm gonna hit the manual or the pressure cook button, depending on your model. Hit that, and I'm gonna adjust the time, so we're just going for seven minutes on high pressure. And that's it, guys, super simple. So while the broth is cooking, let's prepare our toppings for the pho. I'm gonna start with one jalapeno pepper by slicing it up just like so into little discs like this. And then take a lime or two, and then cut them up into wedges. I'm gonna take one 14 ounce can of bean sprouts, or however you wanna do your bean sprouts. Drain these, they're in liquid, obviously, so drain these, and then just set some aside. There we go. And that completes the toppings I'm gonna to be using for my pho. That includes the lime wedges, the sliced jalapeno, the bean sprouts, and some people's favorite ingredients of all time, some cilantro leaves that I just ripped off of some fresh uh, cilantro stalks. And now we can do whatever we want. If you want mint on there too, some people like that, put mint in there. If you hate bean sprouts and cilantro, don't add it. If you don't want any jalapenos, don't add it. I mean, if you want jelly beans in there, put jelly beans in there for all I care. Just enjoy it however you want it. Have it your way. But the crown garnish, you're all gonna want in there for sure are these delicious browned onions. Don't forget about those, all right? And now that we're done, we're gonna do a quick release. So the pin just dropped, so let's take the lid off. And there is our pho broth, looking amazing. All right guys, so now let's go fishing. Let's take a slotted spoon and get that middle tea bowl out. Look at that, on the first try. It's gotta be some good luck, huh? Let's take this and let's just gonna simply discard this, okay? Well, don't discard the ball. Discard the things that's in the ball, rinse the ball, and then save it for another time when you wanna make more pho. You know what I mean? Okay, one final step in terms of seasoning. And people are gonna call me crazy for this and they're gonna rip me up and whatever. Don't care. My pho, my rules. We're gonna add in now one teaspoon of seasoned salt and stir that up. And now it's time to tend to our noodles. Now you see how cloudy the water is after putting the noodles inside there? After submerging the noodles in there for so long and letting them cook, it's going to release that cloudy color, which is perfect. You'll also notice that the pot is nowhere near as hot as it was when the water once went into it at first. And the noodles, of course, just taste them and make sure they're just right. But by now, after they've been sitting for all this time, they should be perfectly ready to put into that soup. So great, these noodles are done. The perfect in taste and the perfect in texture and color. And so now we are ready to prepare our bowls of pho. So we're going to start by adding some noodles to the bowl. Not a ton, just about that much. That's perfect right there. And now we're going to add in our broth. Make sure you get plenty of broth and plenty of chicken. But the broth is more important to me. Make sure everything is covered in that broth. All right. Now put in some jalapeno peppers in there. I like to do this in quadrants, by the way. Some bean sprouts over here. Some cilantro over here and a lovely lime wedge right over here. We have to put some of that delicious onion right on top. I'm using my hands because this is my bowl of pho. If you're handling someone else's pho, wash your hands. And of course, a finishing touch of some chopsticks over here and a nice big spoon over here. And it is time to serve this baby up. I've never been more excited in my life. I am so pho excited for this pho. Ooh, oh, that is a deep, rich broth. The flavor. It's exactly like a pho, except it took so much less time than a typical fuzz take to make. And now, not detracting from those at all, those were obviously some serious, serious fuzz. But if you wanna make one that's really very simple with really easy to get ingredients that you could do super quick in the Instant Pot compared to the other process, this is the one to use, guys. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this recipe. Oh, wow. Oh, the onions are special. They are special. Use two onions if you want. 
honestly, in the beginning, because the onions are incredible. The bean sprouts give it a nice consistency. The noodles are cooked to perfection. Having them just soak the entire time is perfect. And I love cilantro, so I'm very happy with the cilantro. I mean, I would normally never say go fuck yourself, but in, in this situation, you should really go fuck yourself. Fa, not the other word, okay? The chicken is similar to what kind of chicken you would get in like a chicken soup. It's so good. And how about some of these noodles, huh? Mmm, I love noodles. Oh boy, you can recreate some Lady and the Tramp right here if you have a loved one you're eating this with. Mmm, chopsticks down. One of the best and tastiest foes I've ever had. Done in absolutely no time at all, and it's so easy to do. Again, this is definitely not your typical pho that you would spend for hours, and I mean no disrespect to those fine chefs who create them, but again, this is such an easy and quick alternative, and it is completely full of rich and deep flavor in that broth. And you can use any topping you want, Whatever you want to put on there, do whatever you want to do. And guys, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm obsessed with Asian foods. Obsessed with them. And this is no exception. This is one of the most satisfying and hearty noodle soups you can ever have, ever. The onions are just, oh my god. Woo! Amazing. Guys, if you enjoy these recipes that are easy to follow and really, really, really delicious, go to PressureLowCooking.com, check out all the recipes. I have over 100, more even coming every single week. Hover over any photo and you can see a little save icon up here in the top left corner. Then you can pin the recipe to any Pinterest board that you want. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLowCooking and like the page. Tons of updates coming out for you when new recipes drop. Some great tips, great sales on items. You don't want to miss those either. And of course, at PressureLock, subscribe to me on YouTube. Instagram, uh, Twitter, I got it all. Guys, thank you so much again, and I am so fucking excited about how delicious this tastes. It's fuck.